What's up guys, this is Kyle from Wax Museum and I am gearing up for not one but two card shows today in the Central Florida area. Uh, the first one I think is called the show, Tampa Bay Show by the Bay or something to that effect. But um, it is a newer show and then the other one is the Bay Area Card Show in Clearwater which I go to all the time now. The truth of the matter is they're right down the road from one another. So as always I'm going to try and give you some of the sights and sounds hopefully pick up some cards and then as you can see here I've got my national bag set up which I will be taking more cards than that to national but kind of trying that out today as well so I'll get all that loaded up and head on my way. Okay one thing I was thinking about as I was driving today is there are three local shows in this area and the Dallas card show which that would really only affect a few of the big dealers. But I'm hoping that all of these shows filled up with vendors and then that means that there are some people to buy from that I never really bought from before. Maybe people doing their first show. That's a real good thing for people like me who are on the other side of the table today because it just gives us so many options to choose from. Okay, so not long after I entered into this card show, I found what I thought was a great dime box. For one thing, it was not the usual hodgepodge of illusions and chronicles and prism and mosaic. You can see this is a lot of pre-Panini stuff, and it's not all 1990 hoops either. Usually it's either one or the other, so I did really well in this box. I'm going to let you watch me dig for a little bit, and then I'm going to cut back in with another video showing you all the cards I picked up. This is the most I bought out of a dime box in a long time. Okay, so you saw a little preview of what I was picking up as I was digging, but I ended up grabbing 50 cards from that dime box. And the first 19 of them here are the Minute in Springfield parallels. And no, they were not all bunched together, but even like, here's Penny Hardaway, like that's a $5 card. Uh, and there were two of them in there. So, I mean, some minor players, Chris Whitney, Malik Seeley, Dennis Scott, a couple of those, Eric Snow, a couple of those, Steve Smith, Brian Williams, uh, Bison Daly, Ron Harper, Scott Pollard, uh, these Ron Mercers, those are rookie year, Luke Longley, Pooh Richardson, uh, and Oliver St. Jean. So, um, you know, 19 of those, and they were not, like I said, they were not all together. They were all mixed up. I went through, I think, two four rows to find all of those. I was hoping there would be some MVP promos. Uh, there were not. Uh, and then I got some of these Heritage cards. There's nothing special about these. These are just, I, I'm, I say I'm doing the set. I have no idea where I'm at. I just grab them when I see them for cheap. I found four of these 96 top super teams. I don't know if you've seen what these are doing lately. I mean, you're not going to get rich on these, but these are have definitely gone up quite a bit. And I didn't find any of the super valuable ones. Like, I think the Spurs one is pretty valuable. But um, the four of those, you know, I was very happy with that find. Uh, also found a super team from, I think this is 94, of the Pacers at the Top Stadium Club. This card here is interesting because this is, uh, there was a big stack of checklists. And normally, I think people would stay away from those. This is 96 tops, uh, Series 2. So it's got Kobe on there and it's got Michael Jordan on there back to back. But um, if you'll notice, it's got this foil. This is the NBA at 50 version. So this is a parallel that, once again, not super valuable card. But when you're talking about a dime box, that's, uh, in my opinion, a great find. Got a Sean Elliott Z-Kling. Um, some more retro-looking cards. These are the uh, vintage 61s. I just like 
cards that look like old vintage sets that I like. So I'll grab them in dime boxes. Uh, here's a run our test. Press pass rookie. Pretty sure I have this one, but it's supposed to look like 72 tops. This Jason Williams from Tops Gallery is not, uh, I think it's the Heritage Parallel. Not super rare, but uh, great find for a dime box. And it's supposed to look like 57 tops. Got a Morris Peterson upper deck promo here. Um, I like these threads jerseys. I think this is Al Jefferson. So I grabbed that one. Uh, Zach Randolph from Adrenaline. Eh, nothing fancy here, but looks nice. And I'll probably give it to one of my friends that's a Grizzlies fan. And then I saw this card here that was numbered. Uh, this trio of Kings players numbered out of 100. Overall, I thought there was a pretty good mix of cards at this show, including what you're going to see here in just a moment, a Michael Jordan credentials card, which PSA labeled as authentic. And just a side note here, I think they should factor that into the grade. I mean, we all know by this point that they pretty much all have that diamond cut. So I don't know. Let's just factor that in by now. But I guess they're too far in the game to do that. But anyway, like I said, good selection of cards. There was that Jordan. There was this limited logos LeBron James, which you don't see too often. And then in this next clip, you'll see something I have never seen at a card show before. And that was fossils for sale. And I think there were some dinosaur teeth there as well. So you never know what you're going to see when you go to a card show. No fossils for me, though. Today it was all about the cards and all about digging, really, which is something that's become a common theme in a lot of my videos, but that's just what I like to do. There's an experienced cost that goes along with that for me. So as you can see, there was a lot of vintage in this box, but I ended up bundling a few cards together and trying to save a few bucks in the process. So I'll show you those cards in a moment after you watch me go through the rest of this section here. Okay, so you saw a couple of these on camera already, but um, what I ended up bundling these. So I got the mirror image refractor, which has Tracy McGrady. It's got Grant Hill. It's got Kevin Garnett. It's got Sharif Abdurrahim. So there's a lot of uh, you know hobby interest on that card. I bundled that with this. It's a beat up 75 Maravich. And then these, I don't know if I showed these on the video, these Nabisco uh, Sugar Daddy cards. These are beat up bad. Spencer Haywood, Bob Lanier, and then some guys from, looks like some football players, a hockey player there as well. But I mean, the Lanier has a hole punch in it. But anyway, uh, those were marked for $3. The Maravich was a dollar. The other one was marked at 9 So I offered 10 on everything, and they went ahead and did that. And I think um, I can probably get 20 out of that with the right buyer. All right, so that was everything I bought at the first show, and in my mind, this already made for a successful day so far. If you can't tell, I was really excited about that dime box, and a lot of good stuff in there, and, th and that's what's fun about a show for me, is just digging and finding stuff. It's all about the hunt, so this was only my second time going to this show, and I expect to see it continue to evolve. Uh, I, I thought it was good already, but like I said, I think it will continue to get better, and I am excited to see about that. So from there, it was on to show number two, which is the Bay Area Card Show at Banquet Masters. And yes, we're a little spoiled here in Central Florida, but anyway, got to experience a second show for the day. So I'm going to go ahead and recap that one in this video here as well. Okay, as you saw there, there was a lot of wide open space, 
And look, I'm not here to bash any shows or to downplay any shows, but I think out of all the shows in this area, this one was definitely hit the most. It was affected the most. And I can say that because I've gone to this show quite a bit, but just because you have a bad impression of a show coming in doesn't mean that there's not an opportunity there. And as you'll see in just a little bit here, I found a card that I wanted pretty soon after I came in. I want to get a closer look at this Dwayne Wade patch that I bought off my friend Dan. And um, it is a prime. It is a patch variation. You can tell by the type of material. Unfortunately, it is just plain white, but um, it is, you know, from a number or something, but it is a patch. And um, it's numbered six out of 50. And also this is Wade's rookie year. And this is a game worn patch. So um, I remember opening this product, definitely didn't get a Dwayne, a Dwayne Wade in it, but uh, for 20 bucks, I thought that was a great deal. So very happy about that. Not sure if I'll keep it in the long run, but whenever I see stuff like that, I feel like it's just good to have it on hand for when the time's right. Okay, so as you just saw, there was still quality stuff here. So even though it wasn't wall-to-wall -wall with tables, that doesn't mean, like I said, it doesn't mean the opportunities aren't there. That includes digging in the quarter and the dollar boxes, which is what I like to do. So I found a nice spot here to do that. So I'm going to show you some of that footage once again, and then I'm going to show you what those pickups looked like. All right, so I'd actually seen this seller at the Spring Hill show, and I asked him about it, and he said he had set up there, but um, I don't remember these boxes being a quarter when I was there. Maybe they were, and I, I was just distracted with other things. So here's what I've got uh, 15 cards for, and I ended up doing it for $3, so he gave me a, a little bit of a break there. So I got a 71 Calvin Murphy, a uh, 2008 Zach Randolph refractor, another minted in Springfield. This time it's Kendall Gill. Uh, Leilani Mitchell, Prism Silver, Patrick Ewing, Black Diamond, that's numbered out of 3,000. Uh, much more modern Black Diamond, Jamal Crawford, that's numbered out of 100. I got this insert of Jimmy Jones, and funny story, um, and, and I won't go into all the details, but I ended up talking to Jimmy Jones on the phone one time, this was years ago, and I, I called him Jimmy, and he's like, don't call me Jimmy, that's what the papers call me, that's not my name, it's James. Well, Panini did not get that memo. Uh, Derek Anderson Refractor, Trajan Landon, uh, I think they call these reflectors because it's the press pass version, numbered out of 250. Nice ABA George McGinnis insert. Mari Stoudemire Refractor, I think it's out of 999. Richard Hamilton Rookie, numbered rookie. Uh, a couple Lenticular Grant Hills, those are just nostalgic, nice cards. And this Clifford Robinson refractor now uh after i had purchased those i went down the line and saw that this gentleman also had a dollar box so i ended up with 15 cards i asked if he would do 10 bucks and he said sure so i got a ronald murray black diamond numbered out of 100 so it's flip murray uh shaheen holloway who is now coaching at uh at seton hall i got a larry hughes jersey a numbered ku coach card out of 299 Another Shaheen Holloway auto. Um, Ray Allen, number to 225. Corliss Williamson, number to 100. A Tim Thomas refractor. And I'm just going to say that Rick Smith's blocked that shot there. Corey Maggette refractor, I think that's out of 89. Antoine Jameson refractor. Uh, Michael Ola Candy, numbered to 500. Doug Christie Refractor, Kenny Thomas Refractor, that one's numbered to 400. Jamal Tinsley, uh, this is the first edition from Fleer Box Score. Um, and this was a this is a second year card for him, but it's numbered to 100. I think I need that for my Tinsley binder, I'm not sure. If I don't, 
Uh, it'll probably go to my friend Steve. And then this Eddie Griffin parallel, and I think this is the crystal parallel number to 199. So I uh, paid 10 for those and three for these, so 13 overall on those two stacks. All right, so that's everything I purchased from the Bay Area Card Show. It is the emptiest that I've seen it in a while, but I am hopeful for next month's show because I think it's got at least a trio of athletes. I know there's former MLB pitcher Chris Perez that will be signing autographs, Jimmy Hart, the mouth from the south, and then I think also Lawrence Moten is scheduled for next month's show. So I will definitely be going for that. I am looking forward to that, and I think things will pick up a little bit there as well. So the only thing better than going to a couple card shows and coming home is coming home to another card in your mailbox. And this one's from the Authentication Center. So I figured I would go ahead and add that clip onto this video. And I hope you enjoy. So I came home and there was this sitting in the mailbox, which I'd been waiting for it for a while. The Authentication Center actually sent it to the wrong spot. So I had to wait a little bit longer. Uh, but anyway, I'd been waiting for this. And uh, it was not in the Authentication price range, but um, it had, I guess, a buy it now that was in that range, so had to pay for that. All right, and let's take a look here. Of course, we've got it rubber banded in here, uh, but at least it wasn't in there. I guess I should look at it before I void that. I don't know if that's a big dimple on that card up in that top corner or what. I don't know. I want the card anyway, so I don't see anything that's just glaring so yeah i'm gonna void this it's hard to inspect the card um you know you trust them to do that but they've shown that they can't always do a great job with that how many penny sleeves are we gonna put in there all right so this was a multi yeah there's a big big dimple in it um would have been nice to have known about that but anyway this is a benedict matherin draft night autograph numbered 12 out of 16 and probably as big of a Matherin autograph as you're going to get. Um, these were signed on draft night. They, you know, signed the inserts that went into these cards. So that's something that I try to target every year. I, you've heard me talk about them before, so I don't have to say much. But anyway, that was in the mailbox and I thought I would tag that on the end of this video as well. So I hope you enjoyed that. Hope you enjoyed the recap of the show. Remember, there are new episodes of the audio podcast that come out every Thursday. And as always, thanks for watching.